Our beloved. So I heard, I was saying this morning, men's hearts feeling them for fear of what is to come. That's what I heard him say. Men's hearts feeling them from fear of what is to come. The heart above all else is desperately wicked. It's evil. It's always looking to do something that can be against God if it's not guarded by God himself. The heart above all else is desperately wicked. The Bible tells us all the time, guard your heart because from it flows the issues of life. And Jesus, you always coached us in saying, Hey, you know, whatever you put into your mouth, because the whole world is fasting right now, right? The Catholics are fasting for Lent. The uh, the Muslims are fasting for Ramadan. Uh, the over-religious Jews are probably fasting for Passover, and the Messianic Jews are fasting from Levin. So the whole world is fasting right now. Everybody is doing some kind of fast from food. But Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is not about eating or drinking. He said because John the Baptist came neither eating or drinking and he said he had a demon. And now Jesus came eating and drinking with everybody and you say he has a de demon. Make up your mind. The kingdom of heaven is within. So, when I heard Oba saying, men's hearts feeling, it, feeling them for fear of what is to come, that's what I heard. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God. Who knows the heart? God. God made the heart. He knows. That's why he kept telling us, guard the heart. So, what does he say about the heart? He says that from it flows the issues of life. He said that we'll speak from our heart to our words are actually what it demonstrates what's inside our heart. Um, and when he says faint, now we have a, a thing that's desperately wicked. And now he's saying men's hearts failing them. Well, they're fainting from what is to come. You know, it's, it's like, what, how does that how does a heart fail? What does that mean? Well, when a heart fails, obviously it's going to stop beating. It's like people are dying from anxiety and all of that. And the Bible tells us, don't be anxious for anything. Whenever you're anxious about anything, and it could be anything, it could be good, it could be bad, uh, and it puts you in that place of, of, I can't breathe, or I, I can't think, or I can't function, and all I could do is just worry about this one thing. What does Jesus say about that? He said, do not be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, present your request to the Lord, right? And then he said, um, he just told me something and I missed it, I lost it. Gonna give it back. He's gonna give it back. He says, Do not be anxious for anything. Well, prayer and supplication present your request to the Lord. And the peace of God, which is in Christ Jesus, it surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind, right? He promises that. But so why are people getting anxiety attacks and that kind of thing? Because they're allowing the one thing that's on their minds or in their hearts your heart has a mind too right you know we looked at the spirit man and all of that so we ain't going to go through there but anyway so the heart it, it wants to it's like okay i have all this to do and uh, my myself my my family and my job and my school and, and my, my house and my food and my i'm and, and how and, and you you basically get into this this routine of being confused instead of having faith in God. You're basically getting into this, 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 this trap within yourself, your own self, because you've allowed a spirit in there that is not of God. What was it? The spirit of anxiety. All right. So what does he say about fainting now? 
man, we're just getting it, huh? And well, what do we get about, what, what do you say about fainting? He says that they who wait upon the Lord shall what? You know, we do this and we stretch our arms like that. What are we going to do? We're going to mount up with the wings of an eagle because we're getting ready to what? Fly. So, they who wait upon the Lord shall what? They shall what? They shall renew their strength. Wait upon the Lord, I say. Wait upon the Lord. Don't be anxious of the things that are coming. Jesus says when you see these things it's the beginning of sorrows but people want to jump out of here so fast they want to get out because they see what's going on there's craziness in the world and they're saying Jesus Jesus come back and he's like well just hold on a second as much as it's getting dark his glory shining there are still people who are uh, making that decision to him There are still people who are being refined. Yes, we're going through our trials. Yes, we're going through tribulations. But His glory is just shining and shining the darker that it becomes. Who's the one that's keeping you in peace? Who's the one? Who's the one that's not um, making you? The panic. What is his name? What is his name? Who's that one? Oh, it just disappeared before I could even share it. Never mind. What is his name? His name is Jesus. So what do you get to do in a time like this? You get to tell people what Jesus is doing for you. He's making you strong. He's making us strong. He's keeping us in peace. What is he doing? What else? They, they shall run and not what? Faint. So we're going to continue. We're going to continue. We're not, you know, when he was like, oh, this is too much. Oh. We're going to continue and continue. To run the race. The Bible says run the race to what? To lose? No, to win. How do you win? Do you win when you've built a mansion or a palace and you've gotten uh, like about, I don't know, 1 to 20 cars and a train and a plane and a boat and you got a bank account of money? Is that how you win? Now these things are nice to have, but is that how you win? How do you win? You win by clinging to Christ. You have to hold on to him. Like like hold on to him like he's the 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 the, the rope that you need to pull it over the cliff. He's the one that we need to just you know like hold on to him, pull it on him, hold on to him like he's your only hope because he is this world's only hope. So, men's hearts feeling them, and men fainting, just only thinking about what is to come. Well, look at that now. What if Wall Street just goes down, and the stock market just goes down, and the food goes off the shelf, and what, what, what if we don't get water, and, and what about the children, and, and, now, what does the Bible say about your cares? Now, this is important. These things uh, like food and water and the kids, it's important. But what do we do? The Lord says, cast our cares on Him because He cares for us. So what do we say? We say, hey, Father, Father in heaven, this, this thing is too much. It's too much for me to carry inside it's too much for my mind and it's too much for my heart so you take these cares the bible says that he makes the yoke what heavy raise it down and pull it out and then you have to just drag and here we go we're dragging we're dragging no he takes the heavy and he gives us his light and easy yoke so when we speak to him how do we speak to god 
in prayer, in worship, all kinds. There was a song today I was listening to, and I was going to share it, but just another one came up. Um, it was like a Caribbean beat, and it was really cool, and it was so powerful. Um, the moment Jesus touched me, all my burdens went away. Something like that. The moment Jesus touched me, all my burdens went away. And then there was another one that says, Freedom, freedom, freedom in Jesus Christ. Freedom, freedom. He that we could possibly have to deal with. We're free in the name of Jesus. We're not bounded by anything. And it comes down full circle because if you see it now, the shackles become the cares. Well, the cares become the shackles because when cares pull you down, it, you're not able to function properly. You're not able to do what you need to do for the kingdom. People do all sorts. They do all sorts in the world. They work normally. They go to school normally. They they just live their life normally. And that's not. There's nothing big to that. Because the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. And if, if you're not working for the kingdom of heaven, or if you're not about Father's business, then. You ain't gonna have a battle. Satan's gonna be like, well, you know, they're not really bothering our kingdom, so we're just gonna leave them with that little thing there until he's ready to take you out. And then he's gonna say, okay, well, since you don't know Christ and you will not receive him, we can attack you and take you out before you find out about him. So cares become burdens and they become like shackles. Shackles like chains between us chains that hold us down from progress that hold us down from um, many many things many many things progress victory um, elevation um, being free chains hold us down Jesus came to set the captives free didn't he came to free the oppressed he came to give that beautiful um you know when you lock something and you just click and it's open you know when you're stifling inside of uh oh wow who is this have you come through the blood of jesus christ you're listening to me have you come through the blood of Jesus Christ so chains can do many many and hold you back you ever heard anybody say well I like my chains I love my shackles I just love dragging around this heavy bowl because that's like the burden you know those chains that that, um, I don't know if they have a special name for them, but those heavy iron bowls that they would put where people can't go very far and they just root it there. It's like an anchor. That's the wrong kind of anchor to anchor us anywhere. Amen? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is our anchor. He is the anchor of our faith. You know, just like... Um, with Paul and shipwrecked and all of that, they put the, the ship... They ran the ship into ground at the exact time. But when you anchored, when a boat is anchored, the winds and waves aren't going to push it and pull it in all different directions. Like people are running from from one place to the next like chicken without a neck. Okay, no, I think it's... Okay, so Jesus is coming tomorrow. Okay, no, no he's coming next week. Okay, okay, no, 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 okay. And you're, they're, they're running, they're running in all different directions because they're not testing the word themselves. They're not... They're not going through the word themselves. They're not seeking the face of God themselves. So how it is you're going to know if you don't listen to his voice? You're just going to, the Bible says with itching ears, they just want to hear what they want to hear. So we're just going to speak what we want them to hear because they're going to run to us. And in the meantime, you run from light 
to lie, to lie, and then you're wondering, why am I still here? I thought we were supposed to be going in the rapture. What's going on? Oh, we haven't started tribulation yet. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll be out of here before tribulation. Some, of pe some, some people, many people, are going to understand that God's grace is so beautiful. His grace is so lifting and it's so powerful that you've been going through the beginning of sorrows and not even understanding that you've been going through the beginning of sorrows, which is the start of tribulation. There's tribulation and there's the great tribulation. So, men's hearts are failing them from what is to come. If you would have looked at the headlines, it's aliens here, and this one there, and that asteroid here, and this comet there, and this city got rubbled down, like flattened, and that one, and this volcano, and that tornado, and it, you, you just be like, what, what, ha, huh, ha. Huh? And wondering if it's going to hit you, wondering if it's going to come to your country, wondering if it's going to come to your home. That, that's where people begin to have anxiety. Anxiety. What does the Bible say about it? A thousand on that side. And ten thousand on my right. It shall not come near me. Are we claiming the promises? Not really. We're just sitting down and forgot about running the race and we're just trying to pile up to ourselves because, you know, we just think that if we have enough food and water, we could go through the tribulation and we're going to be fine. If you're not renting like me. Then if you're renting, it's like, oh, where am I going to get the rent? And oh, where am I going to get? And I'm not working anymore. And I'm not this and I'm not that. So how am I going to survive? And uh, what did God say about it? He said the Gentiles, they worry about these things. They worry about food and, and clothes and, and shelter and, and, and house and how big the house is and how shiny and, and what and what. And he says, what, what does he say? What does he say about the birds? What does he say about the trees? How does this planet hold together? Why is this planet holding together with all the disasters that's going on? He's doing it. So he said, he said, aren't you worth more than a bird? Two birds are sold for one penny, one coin, and yet Father does not let any die until it's time. Who's looking at me? Why are you looking at me? I don't know who you are and why you're looking at me. I don't know if you could see that there. There's an eye right there. See it? So he says, no bird falls, no bird falls to the ground without his permission. Not one. Come back to me. Not one. Yeah, it's kind of dark, but anyway. Not one falls to the ground without the permission of God. And he said, aren't you worth more than birds? Or is a bird worth more than you? So would Father allow um, a, a bird not to die? And then he would be like, um, well, you're not a bird, so you can just, you know, whatever happens to you happens. Do we trust God is the question. And we can see that faith faith is failing in the body of Christ a lot. People want theatricals. They want explosions and fireworks. They want to see convulsions. They want to see demons being cast out. They want to see uh, uh, they want to see all kinds of theatricals. They need to see. Do you see what the, they see? They need to see to believe. But what did Jesus say about seeing? He said, blessed are they who have believed without seeing. Not big eye in the sky. 
Blessed are they who have believed without seeing. So you don't see Jesus Christ physically, but you have received him spiritually, and that should be enough. You don't see uh, how it's going to work out. How is this going to pan out? What's going to happen? But you can trust the God whose word is true. You can trust him who holds our today, our tomorrow, our yesterday, and the future. You can trust him who is called love. You can trust him who has been patient with us and hadn't annihilated us off the face of the planet. You can put your trust in him. You can... So, this is how you're not going to faint. You're putting your cares to Him. You're giving Him your heavy burdens because He's the burden lifter. He's Massa. Burden lifted, lifted, burden lifted. You know that song? Hopefully you knew that song. Else I'd just be looking like a crazy person. Um, this is it. Just give me one. Just give me a second. So, he's the burden lifter. He's the burden bearer. He's the one who is he's always encouraging us. When you, you ever felt like giving up? Do you know how many times I felt like, just like saying, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. You know why? Not because I don't want to do it, but because people are not receiving. They don't want truth. They don't want they want theatricals. So, he's like, well, how many people did I have with me? Twelve. And that's what he went around changing the world with. Twelve. And how many people did Moses have? Two. And how many people did Elijah have? One. How many people did Noah have? Eight. So instead of complaining, you learn to give thanks now. You learn to be like, well, it's not the best of the best, but it's still something. Well, it's, it might be the way that I visioned it, but it's still something. Well, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't really know how to think or what to think about this thing, but I'm going to put my trust in you anyway. Well, I don't really understand a lot of things, but I'm going to bank on your word. Cast your cares on him. I'm just going to close this down and I'll be right back. Just hold a second. If I don't, if I don't, the froggies come in. And I don't want the froggies to come in. Just give me a second. There we go. Okay, and now you're in the complete darkness. <laughs> okay, give me a second. Ta -da! And then there was light. Alright. So, not that, this one. Alright, so, if we don't cast our cares on him, who do we cast our cares on? Each other, on people. We're supposed to be praying for each other, but instead, do you know what there's there's uh there's been going around? People say, well, I pray and I go to church, so I don't really need a prayer. Hmm. Well, why don't you ask me if I need prayer? Why don't you ask me what I what I would love to be lifted up in? Why won't you ask me? Am I not someone too? Doesn't Jesus love me too? Huh? So men's hearts feeling them for fear of what is to come. Let me just find that scripture and I'll read it. Give me a second. Men. Hearts. Feeling. For what? Men's hearts feeling them for what is to come. I didn't check out anything. I didn't even plan to come on, but here we go. Because I was trying to rest my voice. Um, 
and you all have to test the things that I say because sometimes I do mistakes I do I do make mistakes sometimes and the thing is like if you don't test it then you're just gonna be like okay mm, mm. like this thing with baby Moses and the um the cloth and I'm like the Bible says the Bible says but the Bible didn't say anything about it that was the movie the Exodus nobody corrected me because nobody was just like oh well mm. let's read Luke 21 26 so before and after at all times which is the rule, right? To get it in context. Some people just, they bypass the anointing altogether and just be like, she's my friend. She's just my friend. It's so sad. It's... <laughs> Alright, let's read. Let's, let's read Luke 21, verse 25 to 27. We'll read this version and we'll read the King James Version. Which one is this? I don't know. Just read it. There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth. Dismay amongst the nations. Bewildered or confused by the roaring of the sea and the surging of the waves. Why is there a tsunami there? Why is this happening here? Why? Okay. Men will faint from fear and anxiety over what is coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And verse 27, at that time they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud, in a cloud with power and great glory. Yay, we're almost there. All right, so let's go into the King James Version here and see what they have. On my Bible. Luke 21, verse 26. Oh, I just realized why I was standing by the window. It is warm here, like... It's hot. It's like, like when you heat in an oven and you say it's almost done heating to put in something to bake. That's the temperature here. Luke 21, 26, alright? Check it up in verse 25. Alright, first I'm reading the King James Version. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplex perplexity, the sea and waves roaring, men's hearts, that's what I heard, hearts, men's hearts feeling them for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And look at verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads, for your redemption draw it nigh. So we're not looking around and we're not looking down, we're looking up. Jesus is coming. The King of Glory is coming. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, He's coming. Hallelujah. So, why would people be fainting now? Because they're not looking up. They're not casting their eyes on Jesus. They're casting their eyes on self. They're casting their eyes on their life for themselves. They're getting depressed, they're getting oppressed, they're getting downtrodden, they're getting heavy, they're getting dark. Some of them turn their faces from God altogether. It's just, it's, but if you keep your eyes on Jesus and just, well, he's coming. He's coming. We're going through it, but he's coming. Turbulence, but the plane is going to land. 
you know, when we don't want God, when we say, well, God, you and your rules up, we don't need you, we're going to make a God ourselves, and we're going to worship God. Well, God says, all right, let the God that you made, which are one of those imitation, them fallen angels that went against him, let one of the gods that you made, let them control the heavens now. Let them control the seas now. Let them control the sun now. Let them control the earth now. And God moves his hand. And all of a sudden, it's a tsunami. And there's an earthquake. And there's a tornado. And the sun, solar flares. And everything that you got possibly think of all of a sudden men's hearts grow cold and evil and dark and darkness is upon the face of the earth you didn't want God his rules were too much as Jesus Christ so you made your own well let your own fix you up now because um, the deception is real and it's in the eyes of men that have blinded them from seeing the glory of God shining in the face of Jesus. If there is a veil, it's veiled to those who are perishing. Message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And we could bray from now till next year. When I say bray, so like a donkey, a donkey does bray. You know, and when we say the word us, it's like, we are like the braying us. A donkey brays until you, you stop yanking its bit, or you give it a cart or something. Men's hearts are failing them because Jesus Christ is not the one God in their hearts. Men's hearts are failing them because the peace that surpasses all understanding that comes from Him is not with them. Men's hearts failing them because he's not the God that they've chosen to bow to. He's not the one that has given them the assurance. We say, well, we eat and drink and tomorrow we die. Do you know that's what people were saying in the days of Noah? Let's eat and drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. Just now, wow, let me find that. Let me see what my Bible has. So that was the King James Version. This is my Bible now. And this is very close to the King James. I don't know. It's uh, Gideon's. Look what it says. Um, and there will be signs, take it on verse 25. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth. The stress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and waves roaring, and men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So, that's the position of the people's heart without Jesus Christ you just you don't want to do it anymore the the heart's fainting it's not strong anymore you know when you say you have a courageous heart you have a bold heart the righteous are as bold as lions Indeed, Jesus he is the lion he is the one who gives the boldness it's in him we move and have our being He holds our today, our yesterdays, our tomorrows, and the future. So what use is it to worry? What use is it to be all stressed out and fainting down and, and just not able to just... What use is it? There's no use. So what do we do? We just go about the kingdom. Live our lives the best that we can towards God. As His Holy Spirit empowers us to keep on doing it. Yes, you can. Keep on doing it. I am your righteousness, Jesus says. The Lord is our righteousness. But then he leads us in. He says, keep on doing the best that you can. Keep on going. Yes, you can. He's our greatest encourager. We're 
running the marathon, but then we feel like we don't want to finish the race? He says, keep going. Yes, you can. I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of demands on you, but keep going. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. That's what the Lord laid on my heart. I didn't plan to come on and see anything. I didn't plan to come on and exert my voice, but he'll have his way. Amen? He'll have his way. So, what do we do? We be about our Father's business. We work in the kingdom best that we can. We live our lives as the best human beings that we can be in Christ. We continue to run the race. And what if we, what if our time has come to leave this earthly body and Jesus didn't come yet? At least you ran the race and you finished it with Christ. The Bible says for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You gain both ways. Both ways. And do you know that the dead, the living does not precede the dead? The dead goes first. Jesus raises the dead first. People who die are going to be lifted up first. Then the living who are alive in him will be changed and caught up with the dead to meet him in the air. It's a win-win. Anyhow you take it, you cannot lose with Jesus Christ. The only thing you lose is eternal death. The only thing you lose is this world that's perishing. Oh wow, big loss there. You lose the world that's perishing. But if you lose heaven, and if you lose Jesus, if you didn't seek him and you don't want him, you didn't hold on to him as a treasure, then you really lose. Because then you lose eternity with him, God. Forever in heaven, that's not good. Imagine what it is like to go through this life and grab and grasp for the world. And then you don't get either. Because you didn't see Christ and you don't get the world. Well, what did you get? Nothing. You didn't get nothing there, nothing there. Well, what, what use is that? That's what he said. Luke Gomez vomited out of my mouth. You can't just be like, well, I'm going to just take both sides because I don't want to offend anybody. And I just, God, you take the offense. You do good with the offense. You take the offense. Offend human beings and let God receive his glory and continually offend them. Rather them be offended than he be offended. And yeah, it's not going to get you a nice place. It's not going to get you invited to parties. It's not going to get you invited. It's not going to get you inclusive, included. But you know what? So what? Jesus was rejected. He is God. If God was rejected from this world, you expect to be loved in this world? If you belong to him, you're not going to be loved. If you belong to him, you're not going to be welcomed into anything. If you belong to him, hey, they're going to want to kill you. They're going to want to kill you. They crucified God. You want them to love you? And, and should we worry about crucifixion now? And should we worry about dying for Christ? No. The Bible says when they persecute you, leave it to him. He will speak through the Holy Spirit. He will speak because he is the Holy Spirit, Yahweh. He will speak and he will give you utterance of what to say. And he'll give us utterance of what to say. Just how to respond. You have nothing to fear, it's a win-win. Nothing to faint about either. Unless you don't drink water like me, which is so bad. I need to drink water. And you get dehydrated, and then you faint. Hmm. That's a really bad, bad habit I have. I need to buck up on my drinking water and buck up on my eating my food. But when he has me in this mood of 
last thing to receive and I'm like, hmm, I want it. <laughs> I, I don't want the water or the food. I want I want what he's giving. So um we're starting um Passover's just in a week. We're starting eleven fasting. And of course the Pharisees and the religious most religious oh yes, yes we'll do that. No, we're not doing that for just fasting sake of flour and things of um no we're actually eating flour we're not eating the leaven in the flour because that represents what sin it represents jesus christ's body was blameless so that and uh just keep your eyes on the keep your eyes on the clouds keep your eyes on the cross when we look to, I don't mean walk with your head up in the clouds and, and then you bump into a pole, but I mean keep your eyes on him. He's worthy. He's worthy. And it's worth it. It's like saying it's worth it. It's long suffering. You know it's good. It's going to hurt. But you know what? We're going to do it anyway. Because he gets the glory. So I leave you with this in Jesus' name. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take away from it. Shalom, shalom, beloved. Jesus is coming. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. It's Sabbath. It's already Sabbath. So, one more thing. How can I leave it out? When we're weak, it's then we're strong. <laughs> Amen. We're strong in the Lord. We're strong in Him. We're strong in Him. We're strong in the Lord. He is our strength. He is our Redeemer. He is the one mighty to save and mighty to deliver. See those words? Mighty. Yes, He's a mighty. He's the almighty, powerful God. When you see things that He's allowing to come to pass on the earth, don't be shaken by it. He's allowing it. And if He's allowing it, there's a reason that He's allowing it for to trust in him they who trust in the lord shall never uh be put to shame if you trust in the works of men and men mankind you will be put to shame but if you trust in the lord you won't be put to shame all right so shabbat shalom 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 shalom